With the release of Google's device access platform that allows you to work with their API to talk to your Nest devices, I went ahead and moved my Nest devices from the Works with Nest platform over to the Google platform. And today I'm going to be working on getting that all set up and integrated. The caveat is that my, my Nest Protect devices are not part of this platform. I'm hoping they add those at some point, but we're going to go with it anyway. Uh, I basically control my thermostat right now, and I don't do much with my Nest Protects uh, other than alerting. So I'm not worried about that. All right, so this is a little bit involved. It requires um, some terminal. It requires a lot of cut and paste and working with the API. So let's get over there and get started right away. All right, so the first thing, as I talked about, you need to make sure that you are um, migrated over. If you don't have any devices in the Nest uh, or in the Google uh, account, you need to do that. And by the way, do not make sure you do not use a G Suite account. This does not work with a G Suite account. In fact, a lot of things don't work with a G Suite account. So make sure that you're using um, a, a plain Gmail or plain Google account. All right, so if you need to migrate, your devices from your Nest API over to, or from your Works with Nest over to, to Google. And make sure you follow this. Uh, migrate your Nest account to a Google account. You'll need to have your devices in here before you can do anything else with it. All right, so once you do that, you need to come over here to developers.google.com and you need to follow along with this guide, which is what we're gonna do. So here are some things you need to make sure that you're doing. Register for the device access program. Activate a supported Nest device. Migrate it over if you need to. Uh, create, create a Google platform project and then create a device at access project. All right, so the first thing you need to do um, is go to the device access console. If you haven't done this before, you're gonna be charged a one-time $5 fee and it's non-refundable. So make sure that this is something you wanna do uh, before you move on to it because it does cost you five dollars and time all right so i've already got device access console set up i've logged in i've paid the five dollars and so i'm going to create a project and we're going to call this project um, nest demo and it's going to ask you for your um let me get myself out of the way here it's going to ask you for your OAuth ID. Um, I'm going to skip this step for now because I'm going to come back and put that in here in a minute. And then you want to make sure you are uh, uh, enabling asynchronous uh, pub sub events. So we'll enable that, create the project. And now we have a project. Uh, your project ID is going to be important. So make sure that you um, keep this page open. All right, so once you have your project created, you need to um, come back over here and you need to enable the API and get an OAuth 2.0 client ID. And we're gonna create, um, you can either create a new project or use one you already have. I'm gonna use one I already have. And then I'm gonna call it from a web server. And it's super important that you fill in this part. And it's gonna be, redirect URI is gonna be this, the google.com domain, create it. And then you'll have your key and your client ID or your secret and your client ID. Copy these down, it's super important to, to make sure that you have these available to you. You'll use them later. And of course, these will go away at the end of the video, so don't worry about copying them and using them for anything. All right, so I have both of those um, done with that. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna um, go back over to Device Access Console and put in our client ID since we didn't already have that. And we'll copy it from where we saved it on the notepad and put it in here. And there we go. All right, so back over here on our authorizing account, we're gonna to need to link our Google account with our um, with our Nest account. All right, so they make it easy here. Just follow these steps. We're gonna open this link in a web browser, but first we need to fill in these fields, project ID and OAuth client ID. So my project ID is this up here. I'm just gonna copy it right here. I'm gonna paste it in. And then we want our OAuth client ID, which you can get from here or you can get it from where you pasted it on the notepad. 
paste it in here, and then um, copy this whole URL, and we're gonna paste this into a web browser. And it's gonna ask you for permission to access your structure as well as your devices that you wanna give access. All right, before you leave this page, you wanna copy this whole URL at the top. It's very important. And what you're gonna want is this section here that says code, after the code equals all the way over here to scope. And you can see that in the next step right here. If we go down to, um, it tells you here you need to have this little authorization code. Now that you've got that, that URL, we're gonna plug it in here. So your client ID is already filled in. You need your OAuth client secret, which you've put on Notepad. So here's your secret. and your authorization code, which is the code that I showed you in that URL. So we want everything from equals all the way over to the ampersand. Copy that, and that goes in here as your authorization code. And you want this entire thing, you can copy it with this, and then go to a terminal, and you're gonna paste that. Now I'm gonna get an error probably, yep. So if you get this error, you need to put this all in one line. And the way I do that is I go back to Notepad and I, I paste it all into um, Notepad and then I put it on one line. So let me paste it in here and I'm just gonna make everything go on one line and I'll put that in here, paste it. All right, so now we are getting another error, which is pretty common, error length required. So all that means is we're not getting, we're not sending content, content length, which is a requirement. So the way we fix that is a, a hyphen D and then I just put two quotes and there we go. So this basically says send content length zero and then it just processes it. So here's my access token and my refresh token. Um, I'm gonna copy all of that just to have it available to me and throw it on notepad as well. right because we'll need that later so now we have our access token and our refresh token also notice it expires in one hour um, for this video I'm just going to get it up and running and then in my next video I'm going to talk about how we refresh and keep the token alive as well as doing some other advanced stuff with with actually setting temperatures and things like that on the thermostats so make sure you're subscribed so you know when that video comes out all right, so before we finish this up, we need to make a device call. And we do that by uh, pasting this curl URL. And it's already filled in our project ID. We need our access token, which we just got. So back to Notepad. Here is our access token. Everything from here all the way down to here. We're gonna copy that. And we're gonna paste that into our access token right here. Okay, and now we're gonna copy this whole URL. And if all works right, you're gonna get a list of devices. So I'm gonna paste that in here. And now you see that I have all of my, my well, my two devices here anyway. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to open um, Visual Studio Code and I'm going to paste this in uh, Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever uh, editor you want to use for this. I, I like a JSON editor so that I can uh, visually see what we're looking at here. I'm going to take this entire bit, starting at the top of the JSON block all the way to the bottom. Copy it, and I'm going to paste it in here. So now we have our, and I'm going to set this type to JSON. Now we have our entire block of information that we need to use this in Home Assistant. All right, so now in Home Assistant, what we need to do to use this um, is we need to build some sensors in Visual Studio. I can do that directly in Visual Studio Code since it's tied to Home Assistant through uh, Samba. So I'm looking for my sensors file. All right, so we're gonna create a br brand new sensor type and the platform is going to be REST, 
We'll give it a name. I'll call it uh, Nest Downstairs. Our resource is going to be our URL that we call to get the information from this device. So I'm just going to paste it in here and then I'll talk about what it is. It's really long. So first part is smart device management, googleapis.com slash V1 enterprises. And then this part right here is your project ID. So remember, um, your project ID is going to be this right here. So there's our project ID. Uh, slash devices and then if you look at the return to JSON you'll see up here that we have the ID for the upstairs thermostat or downstairs thermostat and if you come down here to the second block you'll see that we have the same thing we have the device ID for the upstairs thermostat so on the end of your resource call here you're gonna put slash devices uh, and then the device ID of the device that you're wanting to get information from. All right, and then the method is gonna be get, and then we're gonna put in some headers. So we'll get our Google API token information from the secrets file. All right, so now we have our authorization set. We are going to create the most important part, which is our value template. This is how we actually get the value that we want from that particular device. So value template. And if you'll notice in here, you'll notice that this is um, typical JSON hierarchy. Uh, I'm not gonna go into how that actually works here, uh, how it's built out, the dictionary or whatever, but what it is is um, you start with devices, then you come down to traits, and you can collapse all these things too. Uh, and this gives you a, a good indication of the how it's built out. So we'd go with traits. Um, I'm interested down here in the um, ambient temperature. So you have to build this kind of hierarchy. So we start with traits. Since we're already pulling devices, that's already up here. We're doing devices. Now we go with traits. And then we're going to put in SDM device trait temperature and then ambient temperature Celsius. So let's build that out. We're gonna start with uh, quotes, a couple of brackets, and then value JSON. Uh, and then we're gonna, again, follow that, kind of that hierarchy, so traits. Close bracket, open bracket. Uh, and then it will be SDM, devices, traits, temperature. All right, so, and then we'll do a couple of close brackets. All right, so this should be the entirety. Now, if I wanna get the rest of the uh, attributes out of that, um, I will add another line here called JSON attributes. Attributes and a couple of spaces, and then I'll do traits. So what that means is that anything under traits will be returned as an attribute. So we'll get all these things we can work with. Later. All right, so now that Home Assistant has been restarted with all the appropriate settings in those files, you'll see that we're getting our data from the Nest API. Uh, I went ahead and converted this to Fahrenheit. Uh, said I wasn't gonna do that, but I did. And that's done in um, a fashion similar to this where you're putting everything inside of parentheses here. So, in fact, I need one more for the round to apply. So I'm basically converting it to Fahrenheit from Celsius. But, um, and also earlier I made a mistake with the a, a decimal here, or a period, so that's an underscore. Anyway, this is the actual full uh, convert to Fahrenheit. Um, one thing to consider is that um, this does expire and you have to use a refresh um, token to keep that token alive. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to get a new token. So again, I'll do that in the next video. I'll talk about how I do that and I'll also work on how I use the set points to be actually manipulate the thermostat values rather than just reading what they are. So um, I hope this was uh, easy for, or I hope this was uh, helpful to y'all. Um, and uh, it gives you an idea of what we can do with the new Nest API integration. 
Remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you're notified when I make new videos. And also, if you feel like you would like to support me and help me in continuing this channel, uh, links down below for that. And also, um, there's Discord. If you have questions, I have a Discord server also linked down below. And we will see you on the next video.